Google Glass is infamously known as one of Google's biggest hardware flops to date. And it actually began to take the world by storm all the way back in 2012, on April 4th to be exact, with a single Google Plus post that read, we think technology should work for you to be there when you need it and get out of your way when you don't. And this was posted by a Google Plus account named Project Glass. It was also that same day that Google dropped a pretty rad and at the time, mind blowing video that showed us what Google wanted the Glass experience to be like. These two simple things that happened really paved the way for a lot of technology. But what happened to Google Glass? I mean, why was it such a failure, especially for being so advanced for its time, you would think that it would have done a lot better. But sadly, the Google Glass journey ended just a couple of years after it started. This, my friends, is the story of Google's most innovative hardware flop, Google Glass. Hey, what's up everyone? This is Dom and I actually got my first chance to experience Google Glass about eight years ago. It seems like forever at this point, but I was very excited to try this whole thing out. I got in as a part of the Google Glass Explorer program, which we will explain in a little bit. And you know what? It was kind of a refreshing thing at the time. The whole thing with Google Glass was definitely a pretty nerdy concept. I mean, I have vivid memories of getting like death stares when out in public wearing Google Glass. It was it was kind of funny, but the the irony of that whole thing is that in today's world, people wouldn't even look twice at you having some kind of wearable on your face that can shoot video, etc. It seems to be much more normalized these days. So Google Glass was in development by a division of Google called Google X years prior to us actually seeing something like in the wild or it being announced or anything like that. And it oddly started from a very creepy question from Google's co-founder, Sergey Brin. He asked, what would it look like if Google was in your brain? So this question eventually led to a spree of rapid prototyping, just getting to something that can fully realize the experience as fast as possible. And thanks to Tom Chi, uh, one of the leads over there at Google X, well, he's actually credited as coming up with the very first prototype of Google Glass. It was actually a pretty interesting story on how he developed the prototype for Google Glass and how everything worked. And he actually fully explains the whole thing in a TED talk, which I will link down right beneath that like button if you wanna check it out for yourself. But essentially, like one of the first working prototypes for Google Glass was slopped together with a bunch of random stuff, including a hanger, a Pico projector, and some plexiglass connected to a netbook. This little experimental prototype was proof of concept that overlaying software UI on the real world was actually something that could be beneficial. From there, Tom and the team actually developed the first prototype of what would be non-functioning hardware on how Google Glass would sit on your face and how it would weigh, things that are important for being able to have something every day on your face in the real world. Modeling wire, paper, clay, and using something like this is able to make something that looked like a pair of glasses really quickly. I cut out pieces of clay that weighed exactly the same amount as the electronic components that, that we were talking about putting on the device, wrapped it in paper so you didn't get clay on your face, and uh, then taped it to the modeling wire in various places to go experiment with, with how a pair of glasses could fit on you. Obviously at that point, things started heavily accelerating in getting this product to market. Well, somewhat, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. It was just basically proven that Google Glass could be useful and they could do it with the resources that they had. On April 5th, 2012, the world got its first peak at what Google Glass was. It was actually in a photo with Sergey at a charity event sporting Google Glass on his face. It was only a couple of short months after that in June at Google's IO keynote where Sergey took the stage and presented the world with the first working demo of Google Glass and everybody was kind of floored. It was a very receptive audience. Pre-orders for the Google Glass Explorer edition launched at IO for attendees, but it wasn't until a year later in April of 2013 when they finally got their hands on them. So that year long window from launch to physical 
Explorer Edition in hand. That's quite a long time to wait, especially when the thing was $1,500 to pre-order. And that's if you were able to get into the Explorer program immediately. Glass was still not readily available to the public. You had to be almost invited to be able to spend $1,500 on this. And it wasn't actually until 2014 that the Explorer program finally expanded enough and opened up to public sales. Unfortunately, it was only shortly after that in 2015, early 2015, mind you, that Google announced it was ending the Google Glass Explorer program. Now you'd think from that, it means, okay, hey, we're done with our beta testing. We're ready to launch a final product. That wasn't the case, actually. It just kind of disappeared. Instead, the entire Google Glass team moved out of Google X into its own division where it's remained silent, at least from a consumer perspective. Google did, however, launch an enterprise edition of Glass in 2017, and it's actually still frequently used in commercial and medical purposes to this day. So it is still out there and it is still being used, but it's still not a publicly available product and I feel like in today's fast paced world, it offers far less utility than it did, let's say in 2013. Here's the problem with the entire Google Glass launch and everything like that. A, it took them a long time to get a physical product in hand and it did take them many years to even develop the whole thing. Now, let's give them credit here where credit's due. They made something that didn't really exist. I mean, they wanted to put the resources of Google right in front of your face without interrupting your world. And that, I mean, that's not an easy task, right? There's, there's so many intricate things that need to happen in the right order to make something like this come to life. But I feel like the world wasn't ready for something like this. As I said before, today's world, nobody would blink an eye at you walking around with something attached to your face. But back then, people started becoming uh, worried about um, AI face detection and uh, recording people without their consent, things like that. It became a really big problem at the time. And on top of that, them launching Google Glass really just stirred up the competition. Everybody wanted to get into the wearable space like that. And I mean, it's still happening today. There's still a race to market for the best sort of like wear on your face AI experience. And all this time, Google has been so very quiet. Only time will tell, but as I've mentioned, one thing is for sure, if Google is being quiet about something that really made waves in the tech world when it did, you know they're not giving up on it. There's stuff happening behind the scenes that we are unaware of at this point. And I don't think that it's the last time we will see a version of some sort of Google Glass available from Google to the public. I think that the beginning is just happening now. They learned a lot about the AR glasses space years before anyone else was really trying to do something. So I'd love to know your thoughts about it. Do you think it was a flop? Do you think it was a win? Are you excited to see what's coming in the future or are you completely against AR glasses. Let me know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, hit the thumbs up button. And if you're new around here, feel free to subscribe to the channel and don't forget to hit the notification bell so you can be notified when new videos like this drop in the near future. I really appreciate all the support, everyone. Thank you so much for watching. This has been Dom and I will catch you in the next video.